Hi guys. Today we are going to see why fine grain materials have high strength as compared to coarse grain materials. As we know, Hall Pitch equation is given by sigma y equal to sigma naught plus k by root d. Sigma y is nothing but yield stress, sigma naught is lattice friction stress, k is locking parameter and d is nothing but grain size. And from a Hall Pitch equation, we can explain that yield strength is inversely proportional to the square root of grain size. And we can also explain in other words that if you take coarse, one coarse grain material and the fine grain material, in case of a coarse grain material, we have less grain boundary area, that means less frequent dislocation pilots, which means we have to apply less stress. That means less stress is required in order to cause the plastic deformation. But if you take the fine grain material, we have more grain boundary area here. That means more frequent dislocation pileups or more obstacles for the dislocation motion to happen. That means more and more external stress is required in order to cause the plastic deformation. Let's take one, for example, let's take uh, one fine grain and then coarse grain material. If you see, in case of fine grain material, here, the N is nothing but the number of dislocations that are present in the pileup. If you take the fine grain materials, the N is lesser in number as compared to the coarse grain materials because the coarse grain material can accommodate more and more dislocations because, because of the geometrical constraint, the fine grain has a very less number of dislocation in the pileup. This can be given by an equation where n equal to k pi tau s l by g b. Here, n is nothing but the number of dislocations that can be piled up at any obstacle. Here, since we are considering grain boundary as an obstacle, so we are considering grain boundary here. So here, l is nothing but the distance between the dislocation source and the obstacle. For example, let us take one grain where the dislocation source is uh, located at the center of the grain. So now here the L is given by d by 2. If you substitute this value in the equation A, we will get n equal to k pi towers d by 4 gb. Here the factor 4 is coming because the dislocations can be piled up on either side of the source right. Because we have grain boundary on both the sides. So the factor 2 is coming because the dislocations are getting piled up on either on both the sides of the source. From this equation if you see the number of dislocations that are present in the pileup is proportional to the grain size diameter. That means the coarse grain can accommodate more and more number of dislocations. But if you see whether it is the fine grain material or the coarse grain material the dislocations are getting piled up and the subsequent dislocations are not able to move. Even though we have more number of dislocations in the dislocation pileup when it comes to coarse grain material, the coarse grain material has a lesser strength as compared when it is compared to the fine grain material. If you have to understand this one, first we should know how the deformation is continuing in the coarse grain material. For example, let us take two grains here, uh, grain 1 and the grain 2 and uh, grain 1 is uh, deforming that means the dislocations are moving uh, inside this grain and the grain 2 is not at, uh, uh, not at started deforming because it's not in a favorable orientation for the slip. As of now the grain 1 is in a favorable orientation that means the critical resolved stress is reached very fast or the resolved uh, shear stress has reached uh, tau CRSS that is the critical resolved shear stress in case of grain 1. Now, if you take a, a fine grain or the coarse grain, the dislocation got piled, piled up and the subsequent dislocations are not able to move. But in case of coarse grain, what happens is that if you take, if you take the coarse grain, see the more and more number of dislocations are getting piled up here. What happens is that the dislocations are not able to move in both the grain size whether it is a fine grain or the coarse grain. But in case of coarse grain, 
द लीडिंग डिसलोकेशन लीडिंग डिसलोकेशन मीन्स द डिसलोकेशन दैट इज प्रेजेंट एट द हेड ऑफ द पायल अप इफ टेक दिस इज द ग्रेन बाउंड्री एंड एबस्टेकल ही एट द डिसलोकेशन इज गेटिंग पायल अप सो दिस हेड दीज आर द लीडिंग डिसलोकेशन द एक्सपीरियंस इज अप्लाइड स्ट्रेस एज वेल एज सम आलफा फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द अप्लाइड स्ट्रेस दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द Interaction forces due to the presence of other dislocations, because we know that whether it's the edge dislocation or the screw dislocation, we have uh, compression, uh, compression stress fields and the ten, uh, tensile stress fields here. So because of the stress fields around the dislocation, the head of the the lead in dislocation at the head of the pile up it experiences applied stress, and because of this interaction forces, so when it reaches some critical value. when it reaches some critical value what it does is it it starts the deformation in the another grain till now this grain 2 is not in a parabola orientation because its tau crss is higher as compared to the grain 1 that's why it's not uh, and it is not in a parabola orientation but the moment uh, the more and more dislocations are getting piled up in grain 1 so what happens is that the leading dislocation is experiencing more and more stress and when it reaches the critical value it starts the slip in the next grain that's how the deformation continues here the tau c is nothing but the critical stress that is required to slip past the barrier and this is also given by n tau s This is average resolved shear stress. N is nothing but the number of dislocations that are present in the pile. So what happens is that when tau c reaches a critical, when tau this reaches critical value, the grain too will operate. So if you see the coarse grain material, and from this equation also, the tau c is proportional to n. That means when the number of dislocations that are present in a pile up is uh, very much high. so that uh, tau c will be reached very fast so this happens uh, in a coarse grain material that is the reason why even though it has a more number of dislocations in the pile up the grain too will start deforming the moment tau c reaches it reaches uh, tau reaches uh, tau c when n reaches a critical value when n reaches a nc this happens very fast in a coarse grain material and it operates the it activates the slip in next grain that's how deformation continues and that is the reason why the coarse grain materials have a less uh, strength as compared to fine grain material because this is not the case with the fine grain material because the critical number of dislocations the n will never reach nc in case of a fine grain material that is the reason why even though we are applying more stress the leading dislocation it won't experiences the tau c here so it won't start or activates the slip in other grain we have to apply the stress externally in order to deform the material that's why the fine grain material has a more strength as compared to coarse grain material and here are some of the important notes that when halfitch equation is derived it's basically based on the dislocation model where they have considered the grain boundaries acting as a obstacles to the dislocation motion but later lee considered the critical number of dislocation in the pile up and he gave a more generalized equation using dislocation density and he considered 50 number of dislocation minimum 50 number of dislocations in the pile up in order to measure the stress fields around the dislocations and the stress fields the stress that is uh, experienced by the leading dislocation at the head of the pile up so he considered minimum 50 number of dislocations the grain the grain whether it is a fine grain or the coarse grain it should hold minimum 50 number of dislocations that is the reason why we'll see inverse uh, halfitch equation because as you keep on reducing the grain size diameter we may not uh, we don't get the benefit of increasing yield strength the moment the grain size not able to hold 50 number of dislocation we we don't get the benefit of uh, fine grain size here there 
the gra that grain size is uh, less than 4 nanometer when you are keep on reducing the grain size less than 4 nanometer we will not uh, get the benefit from grain size refinement here uh, deformation happens by grain boundary sliding here deformation will be uh, will be easy because the grains can slide on one another because of the more grain boundary area that's all for today uh, let's meet in the next class we'll discuss more about this grain boundary strengthening